Hey there, so quite a few of you have asked me to share my thoughts on this shirt storm or shirt gate thing, whatever you call it, and in typical fashion I guess I just had to wait until everybody got fed up with the topic so I can talk about it after nobody cares anymore. Now just for future reference, whenever you ask me to talk about a certain subject on this channel, you should visualize me responding Be careful what you wish for! I'm just saying. Okay, so very quickly, for the people who've been living in a cave or have been doing really good drugs lately and don't know anything about the comet landing or about the so-called shirt storm that ensued, first of all, brace yourselves, because humanity has managed to land a freaking robot on a freaking comet. What Phila is actually going to be uncovering is just what is a comet made out of, and what is its structure, and, and what is that surface like? The lander hit the comet's low gravity surface, then bounced up and stayed aloft for nearly two hours. It then bounced again and settled about a kilometer away in the shadow of a cliff. No, it's not just because of your drugs. This really is like the coolest thing ever. But then something else happened that gained almost as much notoriety as the comet landing itself. And that is that this guy, Dr. Matt Taylor, who's part of the team of scientists who worked on the Rosetta mission, decided to wear this shirt while doing some media interviews. Just in case you can notice, it's a Hawaiian style shirt that features scantily dressed women. What followed was a wave of angry people, many, if not most of whom feminists who said that this shirt is sexist and inappropriate and gave this as an example of why there aren't more women working in STEM. Which was followed by another wave of angry people telling the first group they should focus on this guy's accomplishment and shut the fuck up about his stupid irrelevant shirt and gave this as an example of why feminism sucks. In order to keep this as short as possible, I'm going to respond to a segment from a video posted by the Young Turks because I think it summarizes well both sides and their outrage. And some women felt that this was precisely the reason why other women feel uncomfortable joining in STEM jobs, okay? <laughs> because this is the kind of stuff that uh, leads to sexism, it's an offensive shirt, that's the argument they're making. One woman wrote, I don't care what scientists wear, but a shirt featuring women in lingerie isn't appropriate for broadcast if you care about women in STEM jobs, right? Another woman says, the fact that a scientist of any gender, but especially a man, would think it's a good idea to wear a shirt covered in naked women while representing a major space agency and a significant research project is appalling. Appalling. And clearly, wow. he had no idea that he was engaging in exactly the kind of casual sexism that drives women away from STEM. Okay, let me just stop right there. If you are the type of woman who will <laughs> allow a shirt to prevent you from joining in on these types of jobs, then you don't deserve to work in these fields, okay? If that's all it takes, a shirt is gonna offend you to that extent. Okay, here's the thing. While I personally don't believe that the shirt is sexist, and I don't believe that this type of artwork is in general inherently sexist, like I know some people do, and maybe I'll talk about this some more in another video. So I don't think that the shirt is sexist, but I do think it was inappropriate to wear during the televised media interviews. And really, I think it's inappropriate to wear to work, at least in that environment. Now, for the people who claim this is a double standard, do you honestly believe that if a woman scientist showed up for these interviews wearing images from Spartacus? You know, like six packs, biceps, asses, all up in her face while talking about science. Do you honestly believe that people wouldn't put her choice of clothing under scrutiny? I mean, hell, probably she'd get scrutinized if her skirt was too short, or if she'd be showing too much cleavage. Women are picked apart for these things all the freaking time. And I'm talking about women who strive to be appreciated for their intellectual contributions, okay? Not Kim Kardashian. I don't understand why people keep bringing up freaking Kim Kardashian in relation to this subject. She's a reality, well, fake staged reality TV celebrity D-lister and her job is to keep people entertained. Who cares? I mean, I can almost guarantee you that if Kanye West wore that shirt instead of Dr. Taylor, no feminist would have a single fuck to give. And maybe you're someone who thinks we shouldn't care either way. Who cares what scientists are wearing, right? But then imagine Dr. Taylor giving that same interview while wearing a shirt that said, I hate fags. Would that be okay too? Maybe you say no, but only because that's clearly a very black and white, no doubt about it, bigoted and hateful message. Okay, then how about the shirt depicting the World Trade Center going down on 9-11? How about the images of decapitated children? How about the shirt showing an explicit sex act from a porn movie? 
would that be appropriate to wear while you're talking about the amazing science you're doing? I'm only giving these examples to show that most people do draw a line between what's appropriate and what's inappropriate to wear in a given context. It just happens that in this particular case the line seems to be blurry enough apparently to make people go all cuckoo gaga. You know what, I don't believe that any woman who works in STEM would just up and quit her job because somebody showed up at work wearing that t-shirt. I don't believe that for a second at all. But when just on your way to work you're bombarded with dozens of images of half-naked women selling anything from perfumes to cars and also just on your way to work you sometimes get catcalled and hollered at even if you're wearing like a pantsuit and a long coat. Is it so impossible to understand how when you finally get to work, excited to do science, in an environment that celebrates women for their mind for a change, you just don't want to be greeted by images of fetishized women in various states of undress, showcasing their boobs and butts and spreading their legs, and you don't want to hear how the Rosetta mission was sexy but not easy. I mean, is it so hard to see why maybe people shouldn't do that? And I know the story behind the damn shirt, it was a birthday gift from a friend, especially this designed for him and he just likes the shirt and he wanted to wear it on his big day. And the thing is, I do feel so bad for the guy, I honestly do. Watching his apology was just so cringeworthy to me. Okay, um, the shirt I wore this week, um, I made a big mistake and I offended many people and I'm very sorry about this. I mean, how can you not feel bad for him? This was a day for him to be happy and celebrate and feel proud, because realistically speaking, this was probably the highest high of his career, and he had all the reasons to be proud. What they did was incredible. And instead, watching him barely contain his tears was just so gut-wrenching, because I really don't believe that his mistake justified the amount of hatred and public embarrassment and humiliation he got. I don't believe that he deserved it. But what also makes me cringe is the fact that this incredible achievement will now be forever linked to this image. I mean, can we just not? And the most frustrating thing is that this whole shitty situation could have been easily avoided. I mean, this guy's job is to do science, he's not a fashionista, and I really can't blame him that much for not knowing any better just because... I mean, let's be honest, scientists are not known to be the most socially savvy of people. However, the ESA chose Matt Taylor to basically be their image, to represent their company in these interviews. But somehow nobody had a common sense to tell him, dude, change your shirt because, you know, like wearing sexualized images of women while talking about this historical moment in space exploration is probably just not the best idea ever. So frustrating! However, I do have to say that some of the articles I saw from feminists criticizing this shirt were, in my opinion, unnecessarily inflammatory. Like that title that read, I don't care if you landed the spacecraft on a comet. Your shirt is sexist and ostracizing. Which of course is gonna get people riled up and of course is gonna get attention, but frankly, I don't think this is the type of attention that feminism needs. I don't think this is productive, I don't think this is the way to make people think. And yeah, you're gonna look like the bully when you're using this type of aggressive rhetoric against somebody who seems more unaware rather than some raging misogynist to deserve it. And then on the other hand you see the people who criticize the shirt being subjected to harassment, to death threats, like really vile things being said flying around from both directions. And you know what? Yes, some of the people who criticize the shirt would be 100% on the other side if Matt Taylor was a woman. But it's also true that some of the people who feel so much compassion now for Dr. Taylor tearing up would just roll their eyes if a woman scientist had the exact same reaction in the exact same situation and they would attribute her emotional outburst not to the horrible harassment she's been subjected to but to her not being tough enough for the job. Whichever side you're on on this, trust me, there's hypocrisy on your side too. To summarize my opinion on the whole thing, I think the artwork on the shirt is fine. Wearing the shirt in public? Fine. Wearing the shirt at work? Mm, depends on what you do. Maybe it's okay if you're a bartender or a surf instructor, I don't know, but if you work in a respectable science environment, I say that's inappropriate. And wearing it during a global broadcast where you're supposed to tell the world about this amazing scientific achievement, 
Definitely bad idea, bad idea man. But again, I do blame the ESA more so than Matt Taylor and I do think that this whole thing got blown way out of proportion. I don't know how to end this video, so I'm gonna leave you with the positive images that came out of this. Maybe thumbs up for them.